During the coronavirus lockdown, a lot more people have been communicating online. Um, Some previously reluctant older people have taken to online meetings and social media for the first time because it's been the only way that you could stay in touch with family and friends quite often. Uh, It's really been a, a matter of needs must. But how often have you seen or have you experienced this yourself uh, as an older person asking your adult child to help you with the IT only to have them say, just get handed over, they grab the phone off you or the tablet or the com- device, click a few buttons, hand it back without actually informing you, <laughs> what, you what they did. How did they fix it? I can tell you I am guilty of this myself and I have had it done to me as well. My nephews and nieces probably better for seniors to go to that next generation of grandchildren for tech help, according to RMIT marketing lecturer, Dr. Togir Aletti, who's been researching what he calls intergenerational tech friction and how to get around it. Good morning, Togir. Good morning to you. That sounds like a very familiar scenario. Is, is that what you're hearing a lot through your research? Yes, it does. It was uh, almost like a direct quote from, from uh, <laughs> some of our research participants, yes. It is very familiar. So if you're a senior, is it is it better to uh, approach... Why would it be better to approach the grandchild rather than your adult child? Uh, well, it, it's not necessarily that it's, it's better, but uh, I think that uh, the, the mindset and the advice that they, they give may be quite different. Uh, so and your adult children would uh, potentially be more uh, problem more solution focused uh, while a child would would be focused around the entertainment value of uh, of various devices so they will focus on on that aspect of it and and for that core reason uh, they would make it more fun as opposed to a, a chore both from the from the parents or the uh, or the yeah, from the grandchild's perspective. Uh, so that that could be some of those underlying reasons there why. So the, the, uh, why the grand- so the way that you would actually learn some of this technology, um, how how it's actually taught to you, is going to uh, um, define how much you use it and, and how well you how how you get into it. I guess how much you get into it. Uh, yes, I, I guess you can say that, uh, and I think some of the some of the reasons for why these uh, frictions, as you said, uh, occur between uh, between adult children and, and uh, senior parents is uh, the focus is quite often on, on how to uh, use a particular technology or how to uh, or focusing on on the technology itself and how to do sequences of operations as opposed to focusing on what is it actually the problem or the underlying problem that you're trying to solve, which is quite often just, you know, sort of everyday issues such as, oh, no, I just, you know, I want to talk to my family members on, on Zoom or whatever. Uh, so you're focusing on what is it, what is the problem as opposed to uh, focusing on, on how to use the technology, and that can often we see lead to, uh, uh, to better outcomes and, I well get around that situation that you just described where just give it to me and I'll fix it for you and boom, 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 mm. and, and then hand it back and, uh, and the, uh, uh, the senior is, uh, is no, no wiser. We, we have an image, I guess, that, that older people um, um, shun technology as much as they, uh, as they can um, because, you know, you don't want to learn something new and you're quite happy with the the ways of, of doing things that you're doing them at the moment, you're comfortable with that. Um, but I was surprised to learn that um, uh, smart device ownership amongst seniors is actually quite high. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, ownership is, is quite high, but confidence of using is, uh, is significantly lower. And what we've seen from, from our research as well, um, uh, quotes such as, you know, like I, I gave a, an iPad to my my older mama a year ago and she still hasn't used it that sort of that sort of stuff so so there's a lot of devices that that's just sitting there and not uh, and not being used uh although during this period uh we've seen a 
uh, from working closely with uh, seniors organizations such as uh, U3A, uh, we've seen a, a larger uptake of, uh, of a whole range of, of platforms to, uh, to continue uh, going to you know, U3A classes and, uh, and stay connected uh, using Zoom or WhatsApp and other uh, other platforms as well. Mm. Do, you, do you have an idea of, uh, I guess, that how how many more people, older people who may have not engaged that much with technology before, have have stepped it up during during this period? Uh, the, that is very difficult to to estimate uh, because the uh, I mean older older people or seniors in general have a very very diverse uh, group of people with uh, enormously diverse. Uh, skill set on around technology and also also interest, um, and just from uh, from talking to uh, various chapters of of U3A, uh, some say that you know, there's resistance from joining online classes, while other other chapters say uh, it's been so successful that we're now getting people from like you know, from interstate or from overseas even joining our classes that have now been been moved online and. When we're now coming out of COVID, we're worried about people not wanting to engage face to face anymore because it's been so comfortable doing it um, doing it online. Mm. Uh, so we see a whole a whole variety, a spectrum of uh, of different responses. And if we, I guess, concentrate for the moment on on the that friction, that um, frustration sometimes between family members, how do we? How can we avoid that? <laughs> How, how do we make that that process of of sharing the skills a little bit easier? Yes, as, as, as what Elder has said as well, you know, to try to focus on what the underlying problem that you're trying to solve instead of how to use the technology. But there's other things, uh, and what we do find is uh, all the children or younger family members are, are seems to be the most frequently used source of information. It's not the most valued or it's not the one that most seniors find the most useful uh, so so focusing on uh, getting the the parent up to a certain level of knowledge where they uh, can enhance their autonomy and independence by using the internet to find information uh, seems to be a, a very good idea because those those seniors that that have that that base level so that when they have a question they they google it or they watch a YouTube video uh, seems to be a, seems to be a, a, a good solution uh, moving forward. And then, of course, you mentioned those groups like the University of the Third Age, and they offer a lot of courses. Sometimes community houses are another place that that have courses for older people. Libraries as well when they're open. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's these, not... are, these are yeah, and these are great places uh, to learn because. Because uh, quite often the, the perspective on how to how to learn things is, is is easier done when you do it together with others that have similar shared experiences with you. Mm. Uh, and as such, uh, there's great value in in learning uh, in an environment with with other people that are same age as you and uh, and have same sort of struggles. And what do you enjoy about researching this field, Togi? What's what what do you what are you gaining from um, hearing from the different uh, different groups? I think uh, like I'm, I'm very interested in the uh, in the digital divide and the uh, the differences between generations uh, and and looking at uses usage patterns across different generations. And I <clears throat> excuse me, I think we have a lot uh, to learn from each other, uh, and we're looking at uh, older cohorts. Uh, are the least likely, for example, to to say that they uh, are afraid that social media has taken over their life, uh, they don't have as much FOMO, uh, and and their usage patterns of of the technology is quite different. They don't carry devices with them all the time, and they prefer. Uh, and what sort of comes up again and again in in interviews with seniors is that not our preferred means of communication is face to face. There's not nothing beats face to face. And uh, while many other younger generations seems to to forget that a bit, uh, and so so I think those those things are are, are fascinating and, and very interesting to uh, uh, to further investigate. 
Absolutely. Well, thanks for your time this morning. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if, if a lot of older people have actually taken up uh, technology at the moment, if, if there's some sort of cool name that we're giving to them, um, you know, if they're, I don't know, boomers and they're using Zoom, they could be Zoomers or something. <laughs> I don't know who comes up with those, those, those terms for the different generational groups. Yes, no, those, uh, I, I, I am reluctant to use those because they tend to be sort of turn into a, uh, a stereotype and, and, uh, and sort of like a label that, you know, that people may not be, be comfortable with. And, and the reality is that, you know, we all struggle with technology from time to time. Even my undergraduate students sometimes complain that, you know, like I haven't given them step by step instructions for, you know, how to, do things and I teach digital marketing so 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 it's and what I tell them is is also what I you know, communicate with seniors and that's or to any anyone any age and that's you know if you if you know the question you know the answer because you can google it you're only you're only in trouble when you don't know what question to ask and that you know this is something we all face regardless of, of age so, so I think I think that's an important message to uh, to send through as well to, to anyone, regardless of uh, what age they are. It's so true. Thank you so much for your time today, Togi. My pleasure. Cheers. Dr. Togi Aletti there from RMIT. He's a marketing lecturer uh, with the School of Economics, Finance and Marketing. He's also the chief investigator for a program they have looking into all this stuff. It's called Shaping Connections. You can check it out, shapingconnections.org, um, with all the Ws, when you, when you get on the internet.